Hello and welcome! This is Rufamonger, my friends. Here we are with another character starter guide for you in Mortal Kombat 1, and this time we're going to be talking about Reptile. So as always, we're going to be covering the character's movesets, what's important, what you need to focus on, some example combos, and some good cameo synergies. But before everything else, let's talk about the pros and cons of the character. So first, not necessarily a pro or con, I guess, but there's a misconception about the character that he's a low damage character, and uh, that's just simply not correct. Off a basic hit confirm, he can give you very respectable damage, and if you're willing to spend some bar, we're getting about 40-ish percent, right? So low damage, definitely not the case. If anything, his meterless damage is above average, I would say. He also has an exceptionally proficient neutral, as we talk about in his button section, but his general range he can commit to an attack from is also above average. It is better than the majority of the cast. From, say, roughly around this distance, Reptile is very much a threat, and this is a distance most characters don't have an effective attack from. Reptile, though, definitely can hit you before you can hit him in a lot of cases. And, you know, as we'll go over in special moves and all cameo section as well talking about some strategies he can go invisible and he actually has a proficient mix-up game and when he's invisible because you could decry certain moves like say the charge overhead are slow they're seeable at 46 frames but how do you see the move when he's literally invisible spoiler you don't now not to say he has no weaknesses so for the most part everyone has their reversals which is great and his looks cool as heck, to be sure, you know, turning big reptile, doing the death roll, gator roll, just slamming you around. But the startup's a bit slow. Characters with multi-hitting normals can kind of easily knock him out of it. Uh, it does low profile a bit, which is handy, but in a situation where there's just multiple attacks coming, it's not fast enough to deal with those kind of moves. Not the end of the world, sure, but it certainly doesn't help. And given the kind of crazy game Mortal Kombat 1 is, I guess you could say a con of Reptiles is he has no one overwhelming strength. So character power in this game is through the roof. Mortal Kombat 1's characters, especially the top tiers, are wildly and insanely powerful. And while Reptile has a bunch of, you know, good things in and of themselves, there's no one thing you could say is dominant. And in a game like this, if you don't have something that's dominant, you can consider that a weakness, unfortunately. That all said, I think he's a much better character than people give him credit for at this stage of the game's life as of the time of this recording. And now let's talk about the character himself. Now let's talk notable normals, the moves that really stand out for Reptile. And we have to start with back four. So sweep, everyone's got a sweep. Nobody's got a sweep like Reptile. Even characters with above average sweeps like Havoc say are still nowhere close to how Reptiles goes. Reptile has debatably the single best sweep in the game because look at the insane range, 11 frame startup. If you wanna hit like max distance, it'll hit later in the active frames. So say, you know, hit frame 13, 14, 15, but still regardless for the overall range, it's an absolutely insane move, an insane neutral button that no one can really contest. So say it's blocked. Oh no, negative seven from this far away. Who cares? Doesn't matter at all. It would only matter if it was here. And guess what? It still has such an incredible amount of pushback. It doesn't matter at all. So as just a go-to poke harassment, nonstop, completely safe. Nobody's messing with you with this. It is one of the single most dominant buttons in this game, straight up. Use it and abuse it because other characters don't have something like this for the most part. Reptile is actually very blessed to have this move. Now here's another move, uh, maybe not as good as a sweep, but still fun and unique, stand three. So most characters, their stand three is mostly nothing, maybe combo fodder, right? Uh, Reptile actually is an incredible ranged move here. Uh, two hit moves does 10% in and of itself. If the first hit connects, the second one's guaranteed other than like super most edge case like edge of the move, edge of the hitbox scenarios, right? And it's just good. It's a good whiff punish. It's not bad in and of itself, as if you whiff from most of the ranges you would use it at, you'd be able to defend yourself fairly quickly. The opponent would have to be incredibly on the ball to deal with it. It is a high, which is his biggest weakness. But if you're looking for a good whiff punish tool and Reptile is a character that's blessed with whiff punishes, this is a really solid option. See a move whiff, if you're at range, boom, take your free 10%, go from there. And speaking of bless, for an allegedly bad character, Reptile has forward two. 
So Forward 2 is a 12 frame mid. And unlike say some older Mortal Kombat games, there's actually not many mids that lead to full hit confirmable combos that are completely safe on block in this game. There's a bit of a dearth of it. And uh, for Reptile 12 frames is really good. So 2-1, 4 2 one, that is, is kind of the gold standard. Uh, you hit it, great. And then if you hit confirm, cool combo, and we'll go over combos in the combo section. It gets blocked, whatever, negative six, safe on block. Also has an additional string of four, two, one, one, which pushes the enemy back and leaves you negative seven. So technically one frame worse, but with the pushback once again here, you're pretty much outside of jab range. You can just walk backwards and for the most part be completely safe. Most opponents cannot stop you from doing this, just walking out without inheriting a little bit of risk themselves. Now to note, the final hit uh, is a uh, special flawless blockable in that it will remove all the pushback and give different frame data. So it'll be negative 17, which is definitely punishable, especially with no pushback. So don't go crazy abusing it necessarily. But for what it is, every now and then, if you go for 4 2 one, it gets blocked. Just, you know, assess the block and say, nah, I want to push you out. And get your free push out. You can walk back out. You're good to go. And eventually, if people know, knowledge checks are a thing in this game. If they know, then they'll try to flawless block. And as soon as they try to flawless block, that's when you can start stealing turns because they're worried about flawless blocking that move, you know, trying to steal your turn. And then you can just do this and then go for like a throw or whatever, right? Play, counterplay, that's the essence of fighting games. Also, to quickly note, 4 to 3 also gives you the same option. So 4 3 1 does this, 4 3 1 1, same deal. Uh, it is slower and it's a high, so up close it's not as useful, but for combos, you can definitely find some application. Now we have 2 3 and 4 2 3. Now I know this looks the same, and for the most part, it is, it's mostly the same move. The difference here, uh, 2 3. Is a launcher. 4 2 3 is a launcher. It's just simply the startup. So 2, stand 2, 9 frames, 4 2, 12 frames. So basically, 2 3 can punish moves 4 2 3 cannot. Regardless, this is a meterless launcher. It does a lot of damage. And as you can see, meterless damage, 37% meterless, you know, as a punish perhaps. We got that damage on deck. So 2-3 and 4-2-3 are just exceptional for combo structure, for punishes, for everything. It's pretty okay. Another standout is 4-3-2, this guy here. So what's exceptional about this string is not necessarily even just, you know, hit the opponent, do damage, all that kind of stuff. And yes, it is special cancelable. So usually if you're going for a special move, you'll go into death roll. Or the uh, hit animation is the same regardless. So you can also go into invisibility at the end. So if you go into visibility, let them fall to the ground and you can pressure them on their wake up. Handy. But what's really, really good about this is the animation where you kind of reach into their guts and pull out. This causes that same fall animation no matter what. It doesn't matter if it's a two hit combo. It doesn't matter if it's a 20 hit combo. It'll always have the same fall animation no matter what. So generally longer combos are subject to gravity scaling. The more you hit them, the more you hit them, the more you hit them, the faster and faster and faster they fall to the ground. Here, if this connects, no matter how long the combo is, it's going to be the same no matter what, which is especially useful. Because it goes in the fatal blow and because the fall down animation is the same, no matter how long the combo is, you can always, always, always get the fatal blow at the end of a combo, which is great because obviously the damage pays pretty good dividends. So in terms of just raw combo ability, it's great. In terms of setups, because it goes into uh, invisibility, it's great. And in terms of if you just want to cash out for maximum damage because you have Fatal Blow, it's great. It's just really, really good all around. And speaking of really good all around, just his uppercut. So nine frames start up a bit faster than a lot of the other uppercuts in the game. And the hitbox on it's just absolutely ridiculous. It like, it is what it looks like in terms of how far it reaches, because it reaches from an incredible distance away, as you can clearly see. Uh, it goes straight up vertically. It's just really, really good. It's just a big wall of no, get out of here. It's not much more than that. You can't really self combo easily without you know using cameos or whatever. And of course everyone can do that because that's the game, but just a basic simple uppercut that's just really, really strong, really, really good. Now, on to his special moves. First off is Acid Spit, and admittedly, 
asset spit in its current state isn't too much to write home about. So uh, as it's on its own base, it is a high, six damage, six percent damage, and kind of eh, honestly, just kind of eh. The EX version is admittedly a lot better, so much more range. As you can see here, like the base version is just not connecting from this far out versus the EX version absolutely is, and it's a mid versus it being a high on the regular spit. And obviously as well, more damage. I would say if you're looking for a good poke, this is not a bad way to do it, but Reptile has much better pokes just all over the board, right? And you don't have to spend meter to do so. So as it stands, there's some gimmicks where you can use it with a teleport uh, cameo because it leaves the opponent standing and you can combo after the fact. Just to give an example, and obviously the damage is all right, all things considered, uh, but you are still spending a bar and a cameo, but still, uh, overall usefulness is kind of eh, but don't worry, we got lots of other special moves that are really useful to make up for. Like say, the dash. So, dash is pretty simple in and of itself, it's fairly quick startup, and basically if it connects, like you physically touch the enemy, you'll go on the other side and bop them on the head, and it's an overhead. And of course, DX version, more damage. And there's a very interesting property for the DX version. So normally if it's blocked, like, you know, you bounce off and you're dead because, you know, it's negative 17 on block. The enhanced version though, no. So the enhanced version, even if it is blocked, you will go through them on the other side and then attack with the overhead and leave yourself completely safe on block. So if you're just kind of going for like a Hail Mary rush, keep in mind that the EX version is basically safe. Like you don't have to worry about it too much. So that's really handy. And what's really handy is the general speed of the move. So 10 frame startup, obviously from anything other than point blank, there's travel time adding to the active frames, but you can punish moves uh, pretty easily that are normally quite difficult to punish. Like say Melina's low side, you can punish that. It's difficult, like you need that reversal timing, right? But it's very doable. So that's a move that a lot of the cast at max range can't do too much about. Reptile can. Like it's not gonna punish all the things that Johnny Shadow Kick can, because you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles, right? Uh, but it is a mid, so moves that have an inherent ducking property, it will still catch them. And while it's not quite Johnny Shadow Kick, it's still better than a lot of other characters get in terms of just raw punishes. So it's a very, very handy tool. Okay, so we, we waited long enough. We waited long enough, right? Let's go to the main event. Let's talk the Force Ball. So Force Ball, as you can tell, is a little different here. A little bit of a splash, but not necessarily a connect. So there's three versions. So you do quarter circle forward and three to get the uh, base version. And basically there's mid, that's not holding any direction. Close, if you hold backwards. And far, fast, if you hold forwards. So the move in and of itself is a launcher. It is two hits and pops up the enemy very high. And at the bare minimum, you know, you can get like whatever follow-ups, you know, if you don't want to learn combos, you can at least uppercut them or something after the fact. But it's incredibly important for both neutral and for combo structure. For combo structures, you're going to be using this all the time. And for neutral, you're going to be using this all the time because unlike many other fireballs in the game, this is a mid. So that means unlike most fireballs, you know, you see the fireball, you duck it, right? Simple as that. If you duck this bad boy, you get blown up. Now we'll show more about like combo structure for that, uh, the force ball in the combo section, but I want to give you some important notes out of the gate. So for force ball, combo scaling off force ball is horrific, horrific. It massively scales your combo, but the enhanced version does not. So. Generally speaking, anytime you use the enhanced version of Force Ball on a combo, your combo is going to be doing anywhere from like 5 to 10% more damage because it doesn't have that massive amount of damage scaling attached to it. So just keep that in mind. While he does have good meterless damage, as shown here and shown later in the combo section, if you're looking to get some real sass out of it, a simple single EX bar burn on a Force Ball will make you do a lot more damage in a combo. Keep in mind though, Better to do it early on. And if you're doing a combo with multiple force balls, which many combos are, do it on the first force ball, not the second one, because the dividends on the damage are a much greater return there. Now, also, also, as far as combo rules. So generally speaking, you're allowed two force ball bounces and they cannot be the same. So if I do the far force ball, so I do it and hold forward, it's the fast one, right? It launches. And if I do a second one, bleh, they go flying away. 
But if I do a fast one, and then I do a regular one, so fast, regular, two bounces, as you can see. Or I can go fast, slow, two bounces. Slow, fast, two bounces. But slow, slow, bounces away. So you can use any two of the three, slow, medium, fast, and two of them will bounce, and the third one will always put them far away. However, the EXs are not subject to those rules. So EX, you can literally do the same EX over and over, and it'll bounce every single time. So if you're looking to do a hyper inefficient combo, you can, and you can use six force balls at the cost of three meters and not even doing 20%, right? But just keep that in mind. So the regular force ball, you can juggle twice, although it has to be two different kinds of force balls. And EXs will always juggle no matter what, as long as you have the meter to spend. Now the death roll. So death roll is your big croc slash gator death roll. You grab them on the leg and just spin. If you ever watch a nature documentary, you've seen something similar. So what's good about this? It's a low, so they do have to block this crouching. And it is a low profile move. So if the enemy does something that's a high, if you call it out, you can go directly underneath it, which is very handy. Because, you know, why deal with the move, right? You're going to use this a lot in combos as an ender. And it gives a pretty good knockdown. It uh, gives a lot of frame advantage, which is very, very handy. The enhanced version is armored, as you would expect, and also does more damage. Also, unlisted property, but it has just like a pixel more range than the regular version. So say we jump back here, right? Regular version completely whiffs. But if we go for the enhanced version, it'll just barely connect. It's like literally like a pixel or two, as far as I can tell, but the enhanced version does have more range. And keeping the fact that just slightly more range, low profile, enhanced version also has armor, it becomes a really good gotcha move. If you catch anyone whiffing something from very far away, you can just go for it and grab them. As we talked about in the con section, as a reversal, when you're waking up, it being slow is a bit of an issue, but for like a full screen, caught you whiffing a button move, it's actually really damn fast overall. So it's really handy in that situation. We also have Falling Fang. So this is an air only special. So jump, quarters go back four, and you kind of cloak out and land on the enemy's head as the big old reptile. It is an overhead too, by the way, and naturally the enhanced version does more damage. Now the thing to note, it is air only, but you can do it so low to the ground that it effectively doesn't matter. Like, uh, it will take a bit of practice to get the timing right, but you can just jump, do it, and go for it. And a very special note here about the enhanced version, because you won't see this in the move list here. So if we go to Falling Fangs here, and we go to Enhanced, right? Cost one bar super meter. Oh, cool, I guess. What it won't tell you is it's armor. So usefulness is debatable sometimes, but if you're an air to air and you're scared you're gonna lose, you can armor out for free. Like the move is armor despite the fact that it is not listed in the move list. So that is definitely one handy thing about it. For the most part, you're gonna be using this in combos. You can use it raw if you're a crazy man. Don't use it more than once or twice because it's death on block. Uh, but it's really good as a base knockdown as you have a lot of advantage on the knockdown and you can follow up with a lot of pressure. And finally, invisibility. So invisibility takes a second to go off. As you can see here, he covers himself with puke and for whatever reason, his puke's invisible. Things just work different in Outworld, I guess, right? Uh, and after a brief amount of time, yo, you cannot see him, therefore you can't see the low, and you definitely are not gonna see that overhead, right? And invisibility is useful in all the ways you think it would be. So I'm not really here to sell you on the concept of invisibility. Certain moves like 4-2-3, you get special cancel into it, and have a large amount of advantage while turning invisible, and the opponent will just have to start guessing what's gonna happen. And as for the enhanced version, it doesn't work. Like it's just straight up bugged. Like I've tried everything. No, it doesn't last longer. No, you don't turn invisible faster. No, you don't get a damage buff. You don't uh, stay invisible if you get hit. As far as I can tell, it's currently, as of the time of this recording, a bugged move because it doesn't do anything. So do not burn bar on this move. However, regular invisibility with the right setups, definitely worth your time. Now let's talk basic combo theory and also just bread and butter combo. So first, Force Ball, you're gonna be using Force Ball, right? And Force Ball, generally speaking, in neutral, you'll wanna be using the far Force Ball for combo ability. The uh, 
closer ones more if you're trying to catch someone doing a jump in against your force ball so it's a read on a read right but generally fast force ball is the way to go and you get your pop-up great what do you want to go for and right here like jump two three three falling fangs works 20 percent on the fireball is better than average to say the least right so if you want to do something basic don't feel bad about it but of course naturally the game being the game we can get a bit more advanced So not a lot more damage, sure, but more damage is more damage. So if you're on the ball, it's a quick and easy way to do so. Also, base force ball is actually a prime candidate for using enhanced force ball. Because once again, as we talked about in the special move section, the enhanced force balls cause much less damage scaling than the base force ball does. So you'll still have an element of it from being in the first raw hit. But let me give you an example if you want to burn one bar. over 30 percent for a base fireball that's exceptional honestly that is a big reward now are all force balls going to hit neutral of course not right but for the one off that does connect right while you're keeping them honest that is a big payoff to say the least so keep that in mind you're going to get decent damage no matter what because once again just even if you want to go for the absolute basic route 20 percent is not awful but if you want to burn one bar after you see that connect 30 percent is quite a bit now let's talk basic B and B structure. So up close, it doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, it could be one, one, four, two, one, four, three, one. A lot of roads just basically lead to hit confirm into force ball, into launch, into combo. So you can use this with a wide variety of starters for the sake of ease of use. We'll use four, two, one as it's a mid. Therefore, you know, can't duck it. Good, just all rounder. And a basic B and B combo on a hit confirm would look something like this. And that's basic, right? That's still 30% meterless, but we can get more advanced than that. Now, the thing is, it gets tricky, right? There's an element of timing the more advanced you want to get. So that combo is basically as easy as easy gets. But if we introduce, say, an element of timing to it, and you gotta practice, we can get a lot more damage meterlessly. So now 35% meterlessly, that's a nice chunk of change. That works out pretty okay. That's even, I would say, above average overall, considering the rest of the cast on a basic head confirm, considering you're not spending any meter. And we also end with falling fangs, which means we can get a lot of decent pressure after the fact because we have a lot of frame advantage. And as mentioned earlier, if you want to, say, use EX force ball instead of regular force ball, if you have the head confirm, the damage, even though the combo will be exactly the same, will go up pretty dramatically. So now we're close to 40% and we did the exact same combo. Nothing changed other than instead of regular force ball, we used EX force ball and it basically gave us just shy of 5% more damage. So if you've got extra meter and you're looking to cash out, this is a good place to do it. Now to note, back three. So back three has exceptional range. It's really, really good. And it is a hit confirmed starter. The problem with the basic combo structure, even though it might be much the same here, is like one, one, four, two, one, all that kind of stuff is if you want to go for the regular force ball, which is generally what we start with, it can be problematic sometimes. Sometimes it'll connect, sometimes, as you can see there, that wasn't a natural combo. So you'll have to do the fast force ball instead. And fast force ball, no issue. It works perfectly fine. The only thing to note is fast force ball is generally what we do at the end of the combo to help out. So basically, if you're using the fast force ball at the start, that means you can't use it at the end, right? Which leads to problems. So either at the end, that means you have to burn an EX, or if you're just going for back 3-1 anyways, just keep in mind the deficiencies of the range and just burn the EX out of the gate because you'll just, once again, do the exact same combo you would otherwise, 
but just do more damage in the end. As you can see, same damage, right? But just keep in mind, it's exceptionally strong as like a whiff punish tool, everything, right? But the one weakness is you're forced to commit to one of your more valuable resources up front. So either, you know, burn the bar early or burn the bar later, but you pretty much got to burn the bar if you're doing it at exact max range. So just keep that in mind. Of course, unless you're doing cameo combos, which is this whole other bag of tricks, and we'll cover that in that section. Now, of course, what if the enemy does something unsafe? What if we want to punish? Well, we get some pretty good damage meterlessly on a punish as well. And once again, that's almost 40% and we didn't spend a single bar. And naturally, if you want to burn the bar on the force ball later in the combo, you'll get more damage. You'll be well over 40%. Now, what about the corner? We all need corner combos. And luckily, our base combo structure off of base hit confirm, whatever it may be, 1-1, one, one, back 3-1, 4-2-1, whatever, it all works out pretty okay. I'll give you two example routes. They're both a little tricky in their own way. You will have to practice them, so use whichever one you prefer. So there we go, about 35% once again, basic combo structure, and using 432 uh, to help with that gravity scaling so we can definitely get a clean ender, uh, because, you know, normally we wouldn't be able to, but thanks to the fact it's always the same hit animation no matter what, no matter how long the combo, that helps a lot. So that's example one, let me give you example two. So this one's 36, so a little bit more damage than the other one, although timing is just a little trickier. So after the force ball, you want to backdash and then go into forward two, three. The thing is, uh, the one thing you really should change regardless, but uh, if you go into your control settings, uh, have your input timing either be short or medium. If you have it set to the long, which is default, almost every single time I guarantee you're going to backdash, try to do forward two, three, and then you're going to do the dash special instead because the input buffer holds it in so long. So just keep that in mind, please, for your own sake, regardless, input timing, set it to either short or medium. Don't have it as long. It causes more problems than it helps. And of course, naturally, like all the combos mentioned before, force balls. If you're willing to hit confirm into an EX version instead, for the price of one bar, you'll get pretty good amount more damage. So now 36 became over 40, right? So for one bar, if you're willing to just put it in there, you're gonna get some pretty good damage regardless. Keep it in mind. Now let's talk cameo usage. Obviously all sorts of cameos are effective for all sorts of characters, but let's look at this one in mind here, Striker. So as we kind of cover now and shown in the video, his uh, reptiles, combo structure and combo damage is fairly self-sufficient. Can you use cameos to get more damage? Yes, sure. And don't worry, we'll cover that in the section after this one, right? Uh, but if you're just looking for utility, man, Striker has it in spades because mostly the grenades, the low and high uh, parts of Striker's offense are all right. Like they don't hurt, especially because say like uh, four two four, uh, you know, is mid low, and you can trick people up and say go forward two into overhead or whatever. That's fine. But the real star is the grenades. Why? Because one, it gives you a good amount of presence. So either on a knockdown, you can use it to chase forward or it lets you be stupid, specifically stupid with the dash. Whenever you have Striker up able to throw grenades, random YOLO dash becomes an infinitely more powerful move because it just covers you. So do it, call Striker. And to note here, Striker, when you call him, when you're doing the dash, he is very far behind you, right? Very, very far behind you. Meaning any buttons the opponents are gonna press, even if they hit you, are definitely not gonna hit Striker and therefore are not gonna interrupt him from throwing their grenades. So if you do random dash and you get blocked, it's kind of whatever. Like sure, are they able to punish you? 
Technically, should they hit a button though, they better not. So say Melina would go for a fairly standard punish, like just one, two, right? Leads to very big damage. Very good. Turns out bad call. Because not only is your move completely safe now, not only did it interrupt her move, right? It's now your turn. Like you can start pressuring the enemy again. Trust me, the first time the enemy gets hit by this, you know, their stuff gets interrupted and then you throw them or something or whatever pressure after the fact, they're gonna rethink all their defense because Striker lets you play extra dumb thanks to the ambush grenade assist. So grenades, like it lets you play solid enough in that extra neutral control, it's an ambush assist, you can do it while you're doing your normal stuff, that's great, but it also lets you just be stupid. Things that are wildly unsafe that you should never do in a million years, just do it anyways. Call Striker right behind you. Since you lunge for it anyway, Striker is all the way on the back end of the screen, completely safe from any retaliation while those grenades are going off and world's your oyster, man. You can just play like a dummy and you're rewarded for it. So now let's talk Scorpion as a cameo. Scorpion for the most part is just more damage, right? But it's more damage in ways that work. But where he's very valuable besides just giving raw damage in situations where you would get more damage is he allows you to go invisible in the middle of a combo. So you can do basically your full combo for the most part and just change up the ending just a little bit, call Scorpion, and then things get very interesting. So there we go. We ended our combo, did a little bit less damage overall, but we ended our combo, did the gator roll, and right as the gator roll ended and we have, you know, over 20 frames of advantage with a good amount of spacing, we exactly turned invisible. So that's pretty dang all right. And then of course, naturally enough, we're invisible. And with a good amount of spacing, are we gonna go in? Are we gonna go for a back three, a low? Uh, are we gonna go for like, say a charge back two, an overhead? Are we gonna go and throw? Are we just gonna block and let them try to do a reversal because they're scared and panicking? Who knows? But since we can end every single combo with going invisible, that makes a very powerful guessing game what's gonna happen next. Now, Scorpion's not the only character that offers this utility. You can also find it, say, cameos like Sub-Zero. But then again, Scorpion also gives us more damage off random forest balls. He gives us more damage on random B&Bs if we so choose to use a B&B combo in a specific way. But being able to give you pressure while going invisible, like as you're turning invisible, that's exactly when you have tons of advantage frames over the enemy. That is invaluable. Even if you got to give up a couple percent every now and then, that is super, super handy and just great. Now, Sub-Zero is like Scorpion, just a little bit less damage overall in a lot of scenarios, but more utility. So Sub-Zero gives you more health, that's handy. Sub-Zero's throw is uh, the second most damaging basic cameo throw in the game, also handy. Sub-Zero is also one of the few cameos in the game that has an invincible reversal. So in situations where say you don't have the meter for armor or the armor is just gonna get broken because slower startup, you can just invincible your way through stuff. And also on top of that, Cold Shoulder is not the worst move to throw out a neutral anyways, you know. It's safer than flinging yourself at the enemy regardless. But the big thing is just like Scorpion, he does give you opportunities to go invisible mid combo. So we can do our basic combo structure that we've kind of shown throughout the video, but what we're gonna change is this. So part way through, instead of going for that second force ball, we're gonna just call Sub-Zero. And after we call Sub-Zero, we're gonna freeze the enemy naturally enough, and we'll go for our invisibility. And after that, we just Force ball the enemy, do the combo we were going to do anyways. There we go, almost 35%. And we are well invisible. Well invisible while the enemy is knocked down. Thanks to the fact that we knocked them down with the falling fangs, got tons of advantage, and we can go for whatever we want. All right, am I going low or overhead? Oh, turns out overhead this time, right? Big bounce, full combo. Can go low, can shimmy, can just walk up and throw them. 
can block waiting out their mash reversals, whatever. Just like Scorpion, as we showed, just gives you a lot of utility. So right now in the current state of the game's meta, as of the time I make this video before there's any patches or whatever, Reptile's considered the weakest character in the game by some. I do not agree with that. I don't think he's overwhelming. I think he's just all right, but I don't think he's the weakest character in the game. Because as you've seen over the course of the video, he's got a lot of good traits. He's got good normals. He's got good space control. He's got good meterless combos. He's got good meterless damage. Uh, the threat of a random force ball can be pretty terrifying if you know what to do with it when you hit it, right? He's got a lot of upside, plus the gimmicks. Ending combos with invisibility, if you have the right cameo to back it up, that's always fantastic. Once again, oh, he has a horrible seeable overhead that's so slow, but how do you see the seeable overhead when you literally can't see what's next, right? So invisibility covers some of the weaknesses of some more of his powerful tools. So if you're looking for a character that just kind of does the all-rounder thing really good, a uh, reptile is that character. He's proficient at most ranges of the screen. Only the exact opposite end of the screen does like have really any kind of failing. Besides that, uh, if you're looking for gotcha moves from near full screen, EX Death Roll is a great gotcha. It's armored, low profile. If you got that meter, you're gonna catch people whiffing buttons or throwing projectiles very easily. If you're mid screen, you're hard to touch. Stand three, back four, random force balls. Like your mid screen is. Great, admittedly, to, at least as far as I'm concerned. You're self-sufficient on damage. You do not need cameos to do damage, although cameos don't hurt, for sure. And you can just play a very fun and interesting game overall. So if that sounds appealing to you, Reptile is your character. And that all said, that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.